Assalamu alaikum and a very good afternoon to academician Professor Emerita Tanshi Dr. Mazlan Othman, the co-chair of International Conference on Tropical Science, Trop Science 2024, Professor Dr. Ahmad Ismail, the chair of the Tropical Natural Resources Tribe, Trop Science 2024, senior fellows, fellows of the Academy, recipients of Top Research Scientist Malaysia, TRSM, members of Young Scientist Network Academy of Sciences Malaysia, YSN ASM, the Academy's partners and affiliates, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the first pre-conference webinar. This webinar is part of the Future Belongs to the Tropics webinar series. This webinar series celebrates the tropics and highlights the importance of science and technology in the region. Additionally, it serves as a lead up to the International Conference on Tropical Science, Trop Science, which the Mahadi Science Award Foundation and the Academy of Sciences Malaysia will jointly host in July 2024. The Mahadi Science Award Foundation, MSAF, is a non profit seeking to encourage excellence in tropical scientific research that brings direct benefits to countries in the tropics and the global community at large. Every year, we award the Mahadi Science Award to the four categories that have produced the outstanding scientific breakthroughs and contributions to problem solving in the tropics, specifically tropical medicine, tropical natural resources, tropical agriculture, and tropical engineering and architecture. The Academy of Sciences Malaysia is an independent organization representing the scientific minds of Malaysia. It carries out strategic studies that are independent, evidence-based, reliable, and timely for the benefit of all. Today's webinar is a joint effort between the Mahadir Science Award Foundation and the Academy of Sciences Malaysia, where we are celebrating International Tea Day. Before we begin, I would like to remind the audience that at any point during the event, if you have any questions, Please post them during the open discussion or for our audience online, please feel free to type them in the chat or raise your hand during the open discussion. Now, without further ado, let's get into the tea tasting session. I would like to invite the co-chair of our upcoming International Conference on Tropical Sciences, Trop Science 2024, Academician Professor Emerita Tansri Dr. Mazlan Othman to give her welcoming remarks. Hello everyone. Welcome to our International Tea Day webinar, which is part of the pre-conference webinar series themed, The Future Belongs to the Tropics. This webinar supports the International Conference on Tropical Sciences or TROPSI. For those of you who are familiar with us, the previous TROPSI was held in October, 2021. We are now starting a new series, which will be a lead up to the International Conference on Tropical Sciences in July of 2024. This time, the focus will be on planetary health. So to launch the series, we are focusing on tea. Now, according to the Food and Agriculture Organization, tea is the world's most consumed drink after water. Tea is also one of the most important cash crops and plays a significant role in rural development, poverty reduction, and food security in developing countries. It is a principal source of livelihood for millions of smallholder producers. And tea also has a cultural significance in many societies. Overall, tea cultivation and consumption provide numerous benefits to tropical regions, including economic, environmental, social, and health benefits. Hence, ensuring that tea production is sustainable in the tropics involves a range of efforts, including environmental, social, and economic considerations. Today, we will listen to guest speakers who will tell us about the actions that they promote 
to maintain sustainability of tea production in the tropics, ensuring that tea remains an important and viable industry for years to come. So enjoy your deliberations. Thank you. Thank you very much to Tan Sri Mazlan Othman for the wonderful and inspiring speech. Now, we, before I invite our moderator, Dr. Pan Chiawi, to take the stage, I would like to introduce a little bit about him. Dr. Pan Chiawi is a tea lover. He is a senior lecturer in the Faculty of Pharmacy at the University of Malaya and currently an ex-school member of Young Scientist Network Academy of Sciences Malaysia, YSN ASM. He has been actively involved in YSN ASM's program, such as the Responsible Conduct of Research and Chrysalis Awards. Without further ado, I would like to invite Dr. Pan Shawi to take over the spill duty session. Please welcome. So um, the camera is there. Okay. Um, thank you very much, Ms. Hayatun, for the introduction. Right. Um, greetings and a very good day to everyone. So I'd like to uh, moderate this session called Spill the Tea. All right. So um, as Ms. Hayatun has rightfully said, I'm Dr. Pan Chawei and I'll be your moderator. So welcome to our first pre-conference webinar, the International Tea Day event. So like what Tan Sri Maslan has said, please um, book your calendar. So this is actually the first webinar for our Trop Science um, Conference 2024. So I'm glad that you could join us today to celebrate this special day. As you may know, International Tea Day is an annual event that was first proposed in 2019 by the United Nations to raise awareness of the importance of tea in the world. As mentioned by Tan Sri Maslan also, tea is the second most drank, uh, drunk beverage just after water, and it is enjoyed by people all over the globe. And it is also a major agricultural product with over 5 million people employed and advantaged from this tea industry worldwide. So fellow members and audience in the Zoom, hello. International Tea Day is an opportunity to celebrate, to celebrate the many benefits of tea. First of all, we know that tea actually can help us to protect our body from free radicals. And also it is important to boost our alertness because of the caffeine <laughs> and also the rich antioxidants. And it is also helped to increase connective function, promote relaxation, and reduce our stress. So in addition to celebrate the benefits of tea, International Tea Day is also an opportunity for us to address the challenges that is faced by the tea industry. So these challenges could be the climate change that everybody is talking about, uh, deforestation, and also the low wage for the workers, like for example, the tea leaf pluckers and so on. Now. Before uh, we introduce the speakers, so the ASM analyst is very helpful and we together has gathered seven points about the sustainability in tea industry. So we are putting the tea in the sustainability. So first, uh, after we, we have done some analysis. First, the, we find that the first best practice for sustainability could be organic farming by um, adopting organic farming methods, which I believe the speakers will be talking about that. Water conservation is very important as well to implement water management, to reduce the strain on the local water resources and try to minimize water um, usage in tea planting um, industry. Biodiversity preservation, which is the topic of uh, Prof Ahmad, uh, that tea plantation can be designed to promote biodiversity by preserving natural habitats. And it can be the wildlife corridors from the existing biodiversity that is in the um, habitats. Next is also energy efficiency. Try to reduce greenhouse gas emissions is always the mission of any industry, including tea plantation. Waste management, trying to minimize packaging waste uh, to treat and reuse processing water and compost tea waste. How are we going to do about that? Next is certification and standards by adhering to sustainability certification and standards where it provides assurance to consumers like us. When we drink the product, we know that these are the product of sustainability. And coming 
with the background of scientists and researchers and scholars in the Zoom. We as scientists also very focused on research and development by improving processing techniques and finding alternative eco-friendly packaging materials for our tea product that we enjoy nowadays. So before we move further into the topics, I would like to introduce our guest speakers, finally. So uh, physically with us here, we have um, uh, Professor Dr. Ahmad Ismail. May I invite uh, Prof to be here? Yeah. So uh, Professor Dr. Ahmad bin Ismail is the chair of the subcommittee on Tropical Natural Resources, TropSci 2024. Hi, Prof. And currently, Prof is the head of the Department of Biology. Already retired. Eh? Faculty of Science, UPM, and Fellow Academy of Science Malaysia. He is an environmental biologist with expertise in the area of wildlife and ecotoxicology. So um, let me just introduce our speakers who are actually online too. Um, Mr. Ashok Chatterjee is a technical advisor at Ball Plantation Malaysia. Hi, Mr. Ashok. He joined the tea plantations in Assam, India in 1983, and he has been associated with the cultivation of tea and production of tea in diverse regions and styles of tea manufacture for 40 years. Hi, Mr. Ashok. Hello. Hi. Our next speaker is Mr. Rajesh Buyan, the director of the trustee program and is a mechanical engineer from NIT Jaipur, India, with 34 years of experience in diverse fields. And he has a deep interest and experience with sustainability, as well as safety, health, and environment in large supply chains and their interplay with the people in the manufacturing environment, including tea plantation. Uh, Mr. Rajas. Hi, hi, Mr. Rajas. So together with Mr. Rajas is uh, Mrs. Anantinda Ray Mukherjee, which is a senior manager of system assurance and trustee. Right, she's experienced in systems implementation, quality assurance, process Im improvement. She's an auditor and trainer for QC and social standards with a hands on experience creating theory of change. And she's also responsible for monitoring and evaluation of sustainability standards. So, all right, without further ado, I would like to invite perhaps the first speaker, which is Mr. Ashok who is pre uh, presently online to deliver um, your first presentation. Over to you, Mr. Ashok. Thank you and uh, hello everybody. Um, I'll just put up my presentation. I hope everyone can see this. Is it online? Yes, yes, we can see. Okay, so uh, hello and, and good afternoon to everybody again. Uh, my name is, is Ashok Chatterjee and I've, I'm an Indian who has been in the tea industry for the last 40 years. I'm currently at uh, Bo Plantations in Malaysia in the Cameron Highlands. And I'm the technical director, uh, technical advisor uh, for Bo Plantations. Now, uh, uh, many tea plantations around the world are still harvesting fields that were planted many years ago. Uh, as you can see on this uh, on this uh, screen, this estate was planted in 1852, and the original trees still exist and are harvested to this day. The tea bush continues to be productive and valuable for more than 100 years in most plantations. And there is a tendency to continue to nurture these old fields irrespective of their yields, so as not to lose the inherent quality that they produce. The health of the soil is obviously of prime concern since tea plantations are intensively monoculture in nature and stay for more than 100, 100 years. Uh, our tea industry in, uh, in, Bo, in Malaysia was started in 1929 uh, by Bo plantations in the Cameron Highlands by Mr. Russell. 
uh, 94 years ago. And the tea stands are still strong and vigorous. So to keep our soil, soils alive, we have to preserve the humus content in the soil. So how do we do this? The basic practice followed is simple and uncomplicated. Boti does manual weeding along with the restricted and limited use of herbicide, which allows the buildup of humus in the soil, in the field. In-house composting of tea waste from the tea factory for broadcasting in the fields during the dry months adds to the carbon content of the soil. Um, Guatemala grass is planted for soil rejuvenation before replanting and infilling. This grass are deep rooting and produce abundant green foliage, which provides a thick mulch for the soil. We also use bioproducts like trichoderma and mycorrhiza to replace fungicides and help in plant nutrition uh, in, the, in the soils. These practices help us to preserve and nurture the soils in, in both plantations. Pesticide and fungicide uh, control through, uh, uh, for, uh, for pest control and disease is understandably a serious and environmental and health issue. The emphasis on on IPM, integrated pest management, helps us controlling these, uh, controlling pest infestation, also reducing the uh, dependence on, on chemical control. So the steps, basic roadmap to this is early detection and marking of pest activity. Define the pest infestation threshold knowledge and identification of the pest, preventive cultural practices, and responsible use of chemicals. Uh, strict compliance with usage of permissible chemicals only with prolonged withholding periods adhering to the European U Union recommendations and frequent testing from accredited laboratories to certify MRL limits are not exceeded. These all help in our uh, quest towards making uh, the teas pesticide free and our environment also safe. To preserve the natural habitat of the flora and fauna, we maintain and maintain the biodiversity. Large swathes of forest and water bodies are allowed to flourish untouched between the tea fields in bow plantations. We have about 40% of the grant area under forest and water bodies. Certifications like MyGAP, MESTI, and FSQS reiterate the standards that are being upheld. In bow tea factories, there is a concerted effort towards environment as well. Palm kernel shell has replaced fossil fuels for, for fuel in tea, tea drying. Solar panels have been installed in Fairly Tea Factory, which produce up to 40% of the energy requirements of this factory, which produces more than 1 million kgs of tea per year. The package tea factory also in, uh, in Bukit Cheating has installed solar, tea panel, uh, solar panels, which produce up to 25% of its energy requirements. After, after water tea is the most consumed beverage in the world. We started drinking tea, tea in the year 2737 BC, that is 4,760 years ago. 
Tea is commercially produced in more than 60 countries. And it is safe to say there is no country in the world where you will not get a cup of tea. In Malaysia, tea con consumption has grown from 18 million kgs in 2007 to 29 million kgs in 2017, with a per capita consumption of 910 grams. With such widespread consumption, the marketing of tea is an enormous business. The tea market is dynamic and fierce with competition from large multinational brands as well as smaller local players. Tea is sold loose as well as in package form. We are of course aware that used packages can pose a severe environment issue. Bow Plantation have taken various steps here too to, to remain sustainable. There has been a complete eradication of plastic shrink wrapping of 17 varieties of tea cartons in bow tea. The tear boxes being used now to pack teas do not need plastic wrapping, thus making them very eco-friendly. Recycle and reuse of packaging material as well as tea sachets. The materials being used for tea packets and sachets are recyclable and marked as such for the consumer's benefit. Converting some varieties to attractive, to attractive tin canisters for reuse is another sustainable step. Biodegradable tea filter paper or tea bags as we know them. These are made from plant fibers and wood pulp, which has been uh, which has the benefit of being decompo of being compostable. The pyramid bags use biodegradable filter paper derived from cornstarch. These are the a few of the steps that Bo has taken to remain sustainable. Bo plantations is a vertically integrated company where tea is grown, packed and marketed. Sustainability in the plantations true to our final product offered in the market is a core value of the company. Sustainability measures can only be successful if the top management is proactively involved in its implementation and direction. Bo tea features sustainability as a core value. The Bo management focuses on a top-down engagement to ensure sustainability is not just a word. Our in tea industry in Malaysia was started in 1929 by Bo Plantations in the Cameron Islands, 94 years ago and still going strong. So how sustainable are we as an industry? And are we walking the talk to remain sustainable? Thank you. That's my presentation. Um, thank you, Mr. Ashok. Thank you for walking the talk and be the, uh, the world leading tea plantation that uh, put sustainability as your core value. So interesting points to mention also like Bo Plantation in Malaysia has been around since 1929. And then um, your points has been coincide with many points that um, I have highlighted just now, for example, water conservation, biodiversity preservation, you also mentioned about responsible use of chemical. And I think I have to agree with you that there is hardly anywhere in the corner of the world that you cannot get a cup of tea, isn't it? Yeah. So um, thank you, Mr. Ashok, for the nice presentation. Next, uh, I would like to invite uh, Mr. Rajesh Buyan and Mrs. Anantida Ray Mukherjee to deliver their presentation. Over to you. Mr. Rajesh and Mrs. Anandida. Thank you very much. Um, so uh, the presentation will be shared uh, from your end.
Thank you. Thank you for uh, uh, giving us this opportunity to present ourselves as a standard in this um, forum. Thank you very much, the host and the August audience. We are trustee. So uh, before we uh, run through our slides and what we talk about in sustainability field, I would like to introduce what is trustee. So um, if you can just move the slides. So what is trustee as a program? So uh, global agri commodity standards, what we are having nowadays are very generic and pose challenges in adapting to Indian con uh, conditions. So what are the applicable laws of the land is there? It is not factored into these requirements when it comes to India. Then this led to the development of the trustee as an Indian sustainability code for the tea sector conceived and created by the stakeholders of the Indian tea industry supply chain. Now this program is managed by the Trustee Sustainable Tea Foundation, which is a no-profit organization. And today, Trustee is the world's largest single commodity domestic agriculture standard in a single geography for a single crop. So uh, how we work? We mainly support the small tea growers, the estate, to improve the competitiveness. Then we establishing um, we establish the continuous improvement in the tea industry through the sustainability um, standard adherence practices. Then we improve the livelihood of the small tea growers and the estate workers. And we drive sustainability throughout the Indian tea industry. That's how trusting work. Now we are having few um, differentiate that can differentiate trustee from the other standards so that I can talk about the innovations. So if we can go to the next slide, please. So why we are innovative? What are our innovative aspects? We are a multi-stakeholder program that is represented in the trustee tea board council and which is from all the important uh, segments that covers the tea value chain. Next is we are the member of ICIL Alliance. So trustee is the only domestic standard which is a community member of this prestigious ICIL Alliance. We are having a large number of hand-holding people and the trainers from the tea producers to the tea producers from the program. We are having implementing partners, the certification bodies, over 79 people uh, resources on ground. Next, we are having a very strong IT infra infrastructure where we are we have developed many application by ourselves only, which helps to run this overall sustainability show. This includes the traceability application, where from the farm to gate, all the traceability properties can be considered in this particular app. Then we are having trusty e-learning program where people can actually register themselves and they can learn about the standard. We are having multilingual animated learning videos for the mainly for the small tea growers. Why? Because small tea growers are not that way very much literate in our country. So we have something which is multilingual animated video, which will help them to understand the requirement of sustainability in the tea growing segment. Then we are having a very big, vast, very robust database system, which is customized online certification management system. We call it TCMS, where we can find every data from the registration to the certificate issuance, all the uh, related uh, data for our monitoring and evaluation. And eventually that will create the impact of the trustee standard. And we are bringing uh, the FCOs also, uh, sorry, FPOs also, the farmers producers organization in the particular ambit of the sustainable certification. Now, in a nutshell, if we say when we started in 2014, our um, standard in the next slide, please. Yes, so uh, we were in 63 million cases in 2014, and now in the exit figure for 2022, we are at 868 million cages T in India, which is trusty verified. And we are having more than 1 lakh small tea growers farmers affiliated to this program. So this is a very vast um, coverage you can see in India. Um, next slide, please. So how Indian tea standard fosters sustainability? I would like to request our director, Mr. Rajesh Punya, to talk about this. Sir, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you, Anandita, and thank you for the organizers of the webinar. 
for giving us an opportunity to talk about uh, the sustainability ethos in the Indian tea industry. So, uh, currently, the tea industry in the state of Assam in India, where uh, which were one of the pioneers tea growing areas in India, is celebrating 200 years of the first tree plantation way back in 1823. So that this is an industry which has a history of uh, 200 years. And uh, having survived for so many years, uh, it is safe to assume that uh, sustainability is there somewhere in the DNA of the industry. But in terms of how the industry is responding, and as a sustainability standard, as, as was pointed out, we are working with 65% uh, of the tea produced in the country. And uh, since India is the second largest tea producer in the world, that's, that's a huge quantity of tea. And, and the other important thing that we would like to point out is that we work with more than 100,000 smallholder farmers who are affiliated to the program. And our online digital platform gives us excellent insight into how things are operating, how things are running, and what is the condition on the ground in terms of uh, tea production in India. So what are we observing as to the approach and how are tea producers and the business adjusting to the sustainability scenario? So one of the most important things we are seeing is that they are embracing the change. Now, if you look at the internal and external environment in the last two centuries, uh, you will see that there has been a sea change, literally. And, and we, as you all know, based on the COP summit, we are at a very decisive moment from a climate change perspective where uh, people are making commitments, people are looking at concrete solutions. Now, uh, the impact of climate change is more pronounced in certain specific areas. For example, the agri-commodity supply chain, which is susceptible to the uh, fickleness of the weather, the changing patterns, the rising temperatures or, or reducing water levels, if that's applicable. So in a way, the, the, the pattern of cultivation, the processes by which there was a fixed cycle of weather, there's a fixed cycle of change, fixed cycle of cultivation. That is no longer the case. People have to be nimble-footed. People have to respond to changes and, 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 and have to arm themselves with prior knowledge and, and be able to embrace the change to manage the requirement to be a sustainable agri-crop. Now, in this way, we are finding that the industry is actually, as I said, embracing the change, tackling the situation head-on, and by responding with the right attitude, they are building up a vast culture of resilient practices so that uh, the industry is able to look at the next 200 years. Now, one of the examples of how the change is being embraced is, of course, the increasing adoption of voluntary certification to sustainability standards. For example, certification to, uh, to the trustee standard which now, as I said, is at a level of 65% of the India. So this, this is one of the examples of how the industry feels that they have to uh, work with the right set of tools, right set of processes, and, and manage the change instead of uh, not really uh, trying to, you know, uh, find ways, uh, ways to... Uh, change so so the, the key here is the change and and the industry is becoming receptive to change our standard for example has has a lot of uh, processes methods and trainings built in to improve sustainability and we find excellent response uh, from the last tea plantations as well as the smallholder farmers now that's important because increasingly the tea in india is being produced by smallholder farmers in fact last year 52 percent of indian tea was produced by smallholder farmers now, as I said, we work with more than 100,000 smallholder farmers on the ground. So inculcating the sustainability thoughts to them through our training creates a culture and helps them to have the tools to meet this, uh, the sustainability challenge uh, in the right way. The other important thing, as the speaker before me said, tea has been a beverage 
for centuries and and the hori traditions of tea cultivation and uh, consumption has embedded many traditional sustainable practices but unfortunately in the uh, in the intervening period in in, in the recent past uh, the commercialization and the drive for profits all this resulted that many of the beautiful sustainable practices associated with tea cultivation actually they were left on the wayside and 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 short term business goals uh, took priority in many cases however for a, for the industry today to survive uh, the industry has realized then and and there's a renewed interest on reviving and adopting the environment and earth friendly practices on on tea cultivation so this is very important because it's it's in a way like going back to the roots where 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 the ancient traditions and the modern requirements uh, find common ground now the 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 treasure trove of knowledge of indigenous knowledge is held by the community the community which which cultivated tea across generations the community which thrives around the tea plantations and they and they hold the the key to the future and so the community is now being increasingly involved in the quest for sustainability in areas like pest control fertilization crop rotation soil management all these are being now increasingly oriented to fit the requirement and the uh, and the rhythm so to say of the biosphere so that we are aligned to the external environment and the community and this i think is one of the most important measure and tool that we can adopt harmonizing tea plantation with the community with nature making sure that uh, a plant and the farming practice that has survived centuries continues to thrive at the same time businesses find meaning so that the livelihoods of hundreds of thousands of workers who work in the tea plantations are also protected so this is where uh, organizations like trusty who are a convening platform uh we can we play an increasing role in working with social organization non governmental organizations focus projects to help and bring this vast treasure of knowledge to fruition in our quest for sustainable practices so this is one of the areas uh, one of the efforts that we are doing now is is a project we wish to initiate is to create a library of practices which are linked to indigenous technical knowledge now india being a very big country these indigenous technical knowledge based practices vary from region to region so it's important that these practices are uh, analyzed and 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 the library created on 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 the basis of the immediate surrounding so that uh, the tea plantations the smallholder farmers have recourse to this knowledge and they can adopt this in in their sustainability journey uh, but i think there is going to be a very good response to such initiatives because as i said uh, there has been a very uh, conducive atmosphere to introduction of sustainability now based on the current scenario in the agri commodity sector the third point here is that the entire supply chain as i said in the game now the whole supply chain not just the tea producers but from the front, from the back end of tea production right up to the end where the uh, packets are supplied to the consumers the entire supply chain is required that they all have to be in it together to ensure sustainability in the indian tea industry so so that's that's a very welcome thing because with every participant of the supply chain being involved everyone orienting their efforts towards the back end of the supply chain where the vulnerable sections like the small holder farmers the workers are there so sustainability needs a holistic approach we have to carry the entire community all the parts of the supply chain with us so so the entire supply chain now getting into the game is providing a boost to sustainability in the tea industry here the fourth and important thing is research and development now the trusty program partners with an organization called tea research association which is more than 120 years old it's one of the largest tea research associations in the world and and we are finding that the tea industry has shed any vestiges of insularity in their approach they're receptive collaborative and they realize that scientific learning and knowledge is the key 
to arming ourselves with a very systematic and 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 focused approach towards sustainable uh, growth of the tea industry so this is another area where scientific community programs like trustee are working as a convening organization partnering proactively with organizations working on areas like climate change uh, reduction of carbon emission and welfare scheme so this is how i we find and and we work actively in the industry to ensure that the industry is able to progress to the future in a sustainable way uh, thank you very much Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Rajesh Puyan and Mrs. Anantida Ray Mukherjee. So um, allow me to summarize a bit. So Mrs. Nadantita has rightfully um, introduced us to uh, introduce us what is trustee program. And uh, Mr. Uh, Rajesh actually has um, shared with us how trustee program help uh, the Indian uh, tea plantation industry on fostering sustainability by embracing the change. I especially like the uh, indigenous technical knowledge whereby they harmonize with the indigenous knowledge to work to sort of like orchestrate it so that it merge with the traditional practice with the modern commercialized, uh, commercialization practice. And of course, fostering R&D is also very important in maintaining the sustainability of this uh, tea plantation. And um, um, to, before we continue, I just wanted to announce that uh, I forgot to mention just now that Dr. Rufus uh, from the University of Yorinda couldn't make it today. Uh, he apologized for that. And then um, since um, he's not present today, then I would like to pass on the mic to our own ASM fellow, Professor Dr. Ahmad bin Ismail, um, to give his views on this topic. The floor is yours, Paul. Okay, thank you, Dr. Pan. Uh, welcome, everybody, for this uh, special meeting. I expected we are sitting together, drinking tea, not just listening. And then I define this uh, International Tea Day, actually, so that to celebrate uh, not just drinking a cup of tea, but more on social. So I thank to all the participants, not many here, but many uh, online, because now it's a trend. Eh? After COVID, we always like to sit at home, enjoy in, in other places, and uh, following the uh, discussion online. And I believe there are some people from other countries also participating in this uh, meeting. Uh, thank you very much, and we can discuss further uh, in the future. Actually, this is a series of our uh, tropical science uh, program 2024, which is started now, uh, as mentioned by Tansri Mazlan just now. We have a special program to bring people together and discuss on the issues related to tropical science. And, and I will talk more on the natural resources issues. We start today with tea, right? Tea very important, bring people together. Maybe late in the evening, but uh, uh, it's more time and long discussion. So tea, we can discuss on the uh, every issue huh, from politics, lifestyle, and so on. And today, I want to bring to you about the uh, plastic. Right? Uh, maybe we can start with the slides. Uh, thank you for the past speakers, uh, three of our speakers. Just now, we are talking about uh, sustainability, I understand all business in the world are very concerned about environment. And as myself, as a background trained by wildlife ecologists and uh, ecotoxicology, is very concerned about the chemical pollution, the toxic effect to the wildlife, and which in turn it is an indicator actually for a uh, human being. Right? So before we die or are sick because of the toxic chemical, we are experienced looking at the animal first. So today, uh, I would like to talk a bit about uh, 20 years, uh, uh, sorry, 10 years campaign for managing plastic pollution. You can go to the next one. Uh, yes, uh, see, I'm, I'm quite not very clear my eyes. You know. So anyway, you follow through, it's a plastic is a global problem. 
since, since many years we have been talking about this. And then uh, we can see plastic pollution in the ocean and how it uh, reflect the, the, our life, right? So maybe plastic is already a part of our, our, our life and we use plastics everywhere. I always say in my talk, uh, many places in Malaysia, especially from head to toe, if you look around, from morning to night, we use plastic. But sometimes we forgot where we throw the plastic and what happened to the world. This is uh, come uh, where knowledge and uh, uh, culture or, or awareness is, is, is very important. So um, we need to take action. Right, so uh, plastic is, is everywhere, as I mentioned. Uh, in this particular discussion, maybe you look at the packaging as mentioned just now, one of our speakers. But the industrial people are working hard actually to think on these uh, issues. And I, as a fellow in academic science, I found that this is very important, it's a challenge. The scientists in uh, uh, in academic science, especially the fellows of academic science and all of our scientists in general, it's a challenge for them how uh, to, 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 to solve this uh, plastic, plastic uh, pollution. Uh, so in general, if we look at the uh, tap water with the pipe, the water coming out, if to, to save the water, you turn off the tap. So same thing. In the plastic pollution, if you cannot control, you go to the to the to the environment, go to the ocean, and so on. We should to reduce. How to do it? Not that easy, right? It's a challenge. The scientists, social scientists, the social economy, and so on. Okay, next. What is the next slide? This, yeah. I Many research. If you Google, uh, at one time we understand that uh, ASEAN countries, uh, including China, produce a lot of. Of plastic in the ocean. So if you Google, you can see hundreds of publications related to plastic, either the big size or small size, and go to micro plastic and so on. And uh, the whole world are responding to this. And then the United Nations already launched to how to end the plastic in the ocean. And Malaysia also put the strategies uh, how to uh, solve the poly uh, uh, plastic pollution. And we start with zero single use plastic, which is uh, very challenging. And recently, and now actually, people are still talking how to reduce the plastic pollution in Malaysia by 2025, which is for me another three years, which is impossible, right? So it's, it's a great challenge. Um, okay, next. Uh, well, 2012, actually, we start discuss on this because my field of uh, research since many years also involve plastic, uh, involve chemical pollution and landfill site, and how uh, all the whole world should manage the landfill site, including develop the technology to reduce rubbish, including plastic, go to the landfill site. So we already discussed in many aspects uh, where the plastic goes to, where they are ending, where they come from, what make people use plastic, and, and, and many other things related to chemical pollution absorbed by plastic and really back to the environment. Also. It's very scary, actually. Uh, if you go through, it's related to many things, including the most important is our health, our generation, and our uh, living environment. So, okay, we go to the next one. Uh, then from there, I come up with this idea with the uh, Coca-Cola, uh, Try to work together with University of Putra Malaysia. We have to start from something. Number one, after we did the survey, the knowledge. The people don't know where the plastic goes to what the effect in the environment. This is very important and very tough because you are facing your daily life. Daily life, you use plastic everywhere. I said from the beginning at, in the morning, you wake up in the morning and then until you go back to sleep, you are involving plastic in your life. You want to change the lifestyle? Very difficult. So you must educate public. So we manage to do it. Uh, we, we, we work with many people. We start from the university. Why I started with the university? Because I believe the university is a learned uh, organization, institution, 
when this, the, the youth there will be, become a few cheerleader, should have or should be able to think, accept the knowledge and try to practice it in their life in the future. We started in the university with the support financially with the Coca-Cola and then uh, with the university uh, support to run the program. And we do a lot of activities plus uh, media support. Next. Right, so this is, I think your job, is it? How many steps you move? Uh, so, what is the campus? Okay, next. Uh, right, this is the, the brief. Uh, uh, University Putra Malaysia give a very good support. And then, uh, as usual, students come and go. You have to do it continuously, like a tadika, you know, like a kindergarten, right? You have to continue. Give the same thing, same the same thing, students come and go. And still, it's very tough. So 10 years, that's why I said 2025, if the government wants to say zero plastic, it's a very, very tough, right? Very tough. Uh, so university give a, a support, a space, and, uh, and, and uh, create a bicycle lane uh, to reduce the emission on campus, give them reward when they come with a, a plastic and so on, and distribute the bin, plastic bin to all uh, plastic, uh, uh, this waste bin to recycle or separating the, the waste. So this support also is not enough because in 10 years, we can see people come and go, people come and go, and there's still uh, no model. Uh, we have the model in university, we don't yet bring the model outside to the community. That's why we need to continue this. Okay, next. Uh, next, please, yes. And that's why I said we, uh, after you, you see Putra Malaysia is a very successful organized this, we expand to another university, the, another four universities involved. And you see, eh, this is one of the support is very important. They, they, they create a recycle center and then they have a program which reward educating, creating awareness, and reward system. This is what we need to do it in a, a, a local community, especially to support this idea. Uh, without reward, people don't come. And it's easy to throw it away rather than, you see at your home, in your house, how many people really manage the plastic in home? Just answer this, and you can see the result of uh, uh, plastic pollution in the ocean. Can we do it? And then with the cost of lamp is very high, uh, all the process bringing, um, rubbish from your house to the lamp site getting uh, more expensive and i always say why you have to pay people to clean your unwanted thing you don't want plastic you don't want rubbish at home but you pay people to take the rubbish from your house to other places i think this is not logic it's not logic right and we need someone something else. so the recycle uh, program we introduced it in the university few universities are very successful but we need a public to follow and we will continue it again. Okay, next. That's the next slide. Okay, more challenge after COVID, right? Uh, I was so surprised. And at that time, I stayed in the hospital for a short time, uh, not because of COVID, but during COVID. I was so surprised and I walk around the hospital, I can see plastics everywhere from the doctor, mask, and they give me the uh, food, uh, and then I went to visit where they throw the, the plastic. There are two uh, medical uh, ways and then non-medical ways. I tell my work for last many years, uh, it doesn't work, it doesn't work. We have the policy, we have the regulation, we campaign, but because of short COVID event, we cannot or you go back to even the worst situation, right? If you go to the beach, every 10 steps, every 10 meters, you can see one mass on the beach. So this is the thing uh, I, I, I noted. So research has been carried out all over the world. There are so many hundreds of publications related to plastic and COVID. If you can go, uh, everybody said the same thing. So, okay, next. Uh, more action we need. Right, definitely more because this is this is human problem. You cannot say manufacturer, you cannot say bow, you cannot say Coca-Cola, you can say this is all 
because the benefit is for all of us, the effect is on all of us. So human should suffer for the human benefit. So we should discipline ourselves, we should respond to it. We want plastic, we demand for plastic, you go to supermarket. Uh, you demand for plastic, if the people pay in Malaysia, people ask to pay 20 cents, so we're willing to pay, uh, so we'll never solve the problem. This plastic issue, I remember when I was a student, right? The supermarket put a big plastic, please use this, they, how much they sell, they put the price there. Very cheap, right? This, uh, they subsidize some more, but still people use plastic bag. This is in developed country. So you imagine in developing country, there's an ASEAN uh, country is the most polluting plastic in the ocean, right? So we need to look. If you look at that, uh, uh, the five countries they put there is equal to other places in the world. Malaysia is the next one. They say Malaysia is not in that <laughs> balance, right? So this is, we need to do a lot. So manage plastic pollution, do not use it uh, you know, necessary, not use, and then uh, program and activity, uh, we, we should do it everywhere. I saw in one uh, private company, or no, corporate, eh? I went to the toilet, I saw the sticker on the uh, inside of the toilet. So you can sit there and you will read all how to manage your plastic. It's a good idea. Eh? So you can enjoy your sitting there and understand and learn from how to manage your plastic waste. So reduce consumption is number one. Uh, stop uh, to stop plastic waste. Okay, next, I think we want to slide more. Next, this yes. So thank you. Please take this home preventing uh, safe energy. Uh, and just now the moderator said about climate change. Of course, in the process, right? in the process of uh, preparing plastic, in the process of keeping plastic in the, in the landfill site, or some they burn. Uh, they have burned the plastic to get the metal inside and so on. This create a climate change, uh, GSG. And so, on. so climate change, biodiversity loss, and public participation, you go together. Now, in the world, everybody are talking about that. And we are very poor in public participation because these are common issues. Uh, your issues is my issues. Your problem is my problem. So we should work together. And we demand for the local community and, and the local private sectors to support the activities. If you go to Everest, i never been to the Everest, but I heard also got plastic. And deep in the Indian Ocean, also you got plastic. So meaning plastic is everywhere, right? And I did my survey on the plastic pellets and small, small. You start from everywhere. In Japan, in Korea, in Vietnam, Philippines, Indonesia, Malaysia, you can see a lot. So we need to be together. If you blame the rules and regulation, they put the law and penalty. Can you accept this penalty? Sometimes we want to punish people say, oh, he's still young. He got a long future, right? He's poor, he cannot pay the penalty. So we, we cannot follow this system. We need to educate, awareness, understanding, and work together solve the problem. So we have, if we drink tea today, where we throw our tea bags and we must have the system to help that the system. If we drink Coca-Cola today or the bottle, water bottle, where we throw it? Uh, if Coca-Cola campaign to get back all the bottles, so how far we support that? Who going to support? What the system you can uh, establish to bring people together and respond to this because this is we declare it's a common issue we declare is every function to work together and try to solve the problem so i think uh, i end with this uh, point there's a long way to do it and we have to work together uh, or the whole world not just malaysia the whole world because whatever happening in malaysia say climate change it will happen in other areas. whatever turtles died because of straw here and the people in other countries also concerned about it. 99% of seabird mistake eating the plastic pellet. And if there is no bird, seabird, they will affect the system. 
The same thing if the whales die, they will evolve the system in the nutrient cycle, for example. So a lot of things, if we understand ecology, we will answer that. That's why we need to educate people and knowledge is given to everybody and every right. Everybody has a right to earn this knowledge and together we solve. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Prof. Um, we certainly uh, do feel your passion on re recycling and reducing plastic. Okay. Um, the, now we have reached four o'clock, so it is just nice for our open discussion. So ladies and gentlemen, be it uh, on physical or you guys are from, attending from Zoom, um, we, if you have any questions, I would like you to put your ideas or comments or questions in the Q&A section and then our staff will actually um, pass the questions to me. All right. But first, um, since you, uh, Prof, you are talking about uh, plastic, so I would just want to continue on with the topic and I would like to ask the first questions. So not only to Prof, uh, Mr. Asho, uh, Mr. Rajesh, and Mrs. Anantida, please feel free to chip in. So when we talk about uh, drinking tea, how do we make sure we actually brew a more eco-friendly cup of tea? So we nowadays, we, because of convenience, we use tea bags. Um, is tea bags actually free of plastics or there are actually plastics that present in the humble looking tea bags that we are actually using. Uh, so what is your thoughts on that, Prof, and also Mr. Asho? Uh, thank you. I think they will answer more. Uh, some people say have some plastic there, some now, there. this is technology. That's why I said it's a challenge scientist, right? If you don't like it, what is the alternative, right? So we have to uh, work hard uh, on how to solve this uh, plastic issue. If they say there is a plastic in the uh, in the tea bag, so uh, either they change to another material, or they manage to uh, the plastic. So now the, the technology is, is is changing. I think people from tea industry can answer better uh, because my concern is what happening in the environment. If I found the tea bags everywhere, I'm thinking of collecting that. And I don't have a lot of tea bags, so I cannot change into the compost or whatever. Uh, and, and they have a better uh, uh, procedures to help and bring the industry or other consumers together, supporting them. So maybe in that sense, uh, they can answer better. But anyway, for me, it's a great challenge for the scientists to work into it. So how about your thoughts, Mr. Ashok? Because I think you, you mentioned about plastic use in your your slides what about that what is your thoughts on that yes actually uh, this as i mentioned in my in my presentation is of course a uh, uh, an environmental challenge uh, because tea is a hygroscopic product and we do take uh, measures to make sure that the packaging does not allow moisture to enter the tea so in in bo actually what we have done is we have actually completely eradicated the use of shrink wrapping that was earlier used to protect the packets. What we have done is we have, we have now converted to tear away packets, which are self sealing themselves and do not need the shrink wrapping. So we have actually in 17 of our products, we have removed the, the shrink wrap plastic. Apart from that, like what uh, you have just said regarding the tea bag, as I mentioned, our our tea bags are very eco friendly. They are made from biodegradable, uh, you know, uh, material. We use plant fiber and wood pulp to make uh, our our tea bags. Even the the very up end uh, pyramid. Uh, bags which are you know these are made with uh, filter paper from cornstarch which is again biodegradable so uh, as far as uh, uh, Bo is concerned the you know the products that we are making are we are very conscious of the environment and we take all the steps to make sure that we do not leave a footprint uh, uh, for the for the worst, um, 
we are also using we have converted at a at a cost we have converted our packaging material which are the 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 tea packets that we have we are using a material which can be recycled and uh, for the benefit of the consumer we have we have marked it very prominently on the bags that these are recyclable so please put them in the recycle bin rather than throwing it with the with the normal waste so there is of course a lot to do in this direction but we have taken the first steps thank you mr ashok uh, mrs anandita from trustee do you have anything to add on this uh, yes, um, thank you. So um, in our case, basically, as we as a standard, <clears throat> we are looking into the totality. So when it comes to a use of plastic, so there are various means where people are actually using plastic. So it's our, uh, we are spreading awareness like the hazardous materials which can be burnt, which cannot be burnt in that way. So as per Indian law, burning plastic is completely uh, no, no. So that we are um, definitely looking into. But when it comes to a packaging, so our uh, scope of certification is to bulk packaging. So there it is for the retail. Uh, so it's, it's not for the uh, blenders who will blend and mix and then put the final packaging. So it's all about the bulk packaging where actually people are using the paper bags. So the paper bags are definitely it's eco-friendly. So that's how um, we are um, closing that loop. But yes, what I understood from my experience that maybe at a very thin uh, layer of uh, plastic they use inside to hold the moisture content and uh, just keep it safe from the outside, any kind of uh, contamination related stuff. So that is maybe using, but the most, the maximum outside of the packaging is completely made by the paper. So that's where we are just closing the loop. Thank you so much for the for enlightening us on the plastics in this tea. And then uh, we actually have one question from Zoom. Um, um does in the zoom is he asked about uh, mr leong asked me uh there is any is there any use of used tea leaves or tea leaves in the bag for post consumption as as for example we know that uh, coffee ground waste are being recycled to make packaging products what about the con uh, the tea leaves that is spent I mean, like has been spent, I mean, has been used. Is there any study to use the used tea leaves as a material to produce packaging products? I open these questions to the floor. Anyone? And trustee or Mr. Ashok? Well, in my, in my knowledge, uh, I don't have uh, any input uh, on using used uh, tea leaves. Uh, by used tea leaves, I mean the leaves which have been uh, soaked in water and we've had the tea. So I don't think, uh, I don't have any information on that. But I do know that uh, uh, used tea leaf is very good to make compost. And for kitchen gardens, it, uh, it is, a, is a wonderful product uh, for, your, uh, for your plant in the pots uh, as a fertilizer. Um, so, I mean, I, that is the only use that I am aware of. Uh, normally, uh, tea uh, leaves is not really a bulk, uh, is not, uh, you know, uh, found in bulk uh, consumption in that way. It's uh, mostly household consumption. So, uh, I think uh, it's quite good for, for uh, fertilizer. Yeah, that's my, thank you. Thank you, thank you. So I have seen people using that as a compost also for their household gardening fertilizer. So with the leftover tea leaves, yeah. So uh, we also have um, eager questions from the floor. We have one physical attendee who is ready to ask. May I ask? Yes, yes. Can we pass the mic to, yeah, yeah. Good evening. Thank you very much, the speakers. Actually, I'm a tea connoisseur. I drink tea 
very often. And uh, I just have a, a small doubt. In Malaysia, to Mr. Ashok, there are many board like cocoa board, pepper board. We have Kenef board. But do we have a tea promotion board run by the government? This one question. Secondly, I'm not sure whether tea packets has got expiry date. Because the other day, I just dug my cupboard. I saw some old tea bags nearly about four to five years ago. I'm still using them. Is there an expiry date for tea? Tea sessions. Thank you very much. I think you will find that uh, every packet has uh, a best uh, before date. Which is normally, yeah, there's a best before date uh, uh, marked in the packets. I think, uh, sir, we still see you here, meaning that the tea was safe. If not, <laughs> you drank it, right? So we still see you here. Very healthy means okay. But regarding the tea board, we have rubber board. Do we have a tea board in Malaysia, bro? I haven't heard about it. Maybe uh, if you want to form the board, uh, you can must have some. Um, uh, it's important to. But the tea, I don't think we have uh, as compared to. And the rubber, for example, uh, uh, maybe India and Sri Lanka should have. But the, the important is here, uh, the agency have to look at many aspects, uh, like uh, the values of tea itself, uh, important of tea. See, I said just now, tea is just not, just not for the drink, but maybe more on social, uh, that kind of thing uh, is more important, I think. Beside guided by the uh, health authority on the uh, the quality uh, drinkable uh, tea, for example, if it's not polluted. Because I don't know, I didn't study that how much the pesticide they use, how much pesticide is accumulated in the tea and leached back to our cup. So uh, that one, uh, I think there is a standard, uh, Mr. Shock. I think you, uh, you yes, uh, the tea the tea is uh, definitely follows the standard, which is uh, tested by MOA, right? And uh, we also have a Malaysian Tea Association. Um, but uh, as as far as uh, Bo is concerned, Bo follows the follows the EU standards uh, of uh, of uh, uh, tea quality. Uh, we have our teas regularly tested uh, in uh, accredited laboratories, uh, both in Malaysia as well as in Germany, uh, because we do have our teas uh, which are uh, exported to other countries as well. So uh, the safety of uh, of our tea standard is very prime uh, to of prime concern to us, and we adhere to all the all the parameters that have been laid down by uh, the tea consuming world. Uh, uh, as you know, EU is one of the most stringent uh, uh, bodies uh, as far as food regulation is concerned. And we try to match our teas so that we can, uh, we can export to, to Europe as well as to America and Japan. Thank you. Okay, Tari. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> you know well, that, uh, it goes to uh, goes to other countries as well. Thank you. Yeah. It's good to know that the tea that is being served today is trusty, verified, and also EU certified. It's good to know that. So I think we have too much of technicality. We discussed a lot, a lot of science and technology. So there's actually a question, which is also I feel is very important. So Francis actually asks, what is the difference between Chinese and Indian tea? And how are these two teas of origins flavors are being created? Like, yeah. So the, the first question is the difference between Chinese and Indian tea and how are the different flavors are created? Is it naturally or how is artificially created the flavors or how? Maybe... Uh, Mrs. Anandita, you want to start first? Yes, uh, okay. So, uh, frankly speaking, I never tried that way Chinese tea. <laughs> so, it's, for me, it's very difficult to say. But, <clears throat> I mean, from a technical perspective, what I can say definitely. Um, first thing is that every country is having their own um, testing parameters and procedures. 
So as um, uh, Mr. Ashok Chatterjee rightly said that they are following EU um, uh, parameters, we are following FSSAI and uh, PPC, Plant Protection uh, Code, so which is like already covering all the aspects of EU and maybe there are a few more also. So it all depends on the um, MRL testing that the ma maximum residue limit takes for the chemicals or the whatever fungicides, herbicides they're using on that. <clears throat> that is one thing, but the taste is something that uh, definitely uh, mainly prevailing upon the climate and the soil uh, characteristics of that particular area, which enhance uh, the uh, like uh, the color of the tea, the fragrance of the tea. So all these, uh, the taste, the aroma that we, we actually um, uh, like, we can feel, we can taste, we can smell. That thing only comes to the mainly from the climate and from the soil. So definitely soil, soil is one part of the climate uh, that we consider when it comes to the tea cultivation area. So in, in case of um, India, in um, it's, it's like definitely within India also, we have uh, three major uh, area in Assam in um, South India, which is in uh, Kerala, Tamil Nadu, and then uh, there is an area in West Bengal. All the three areas, these are different in taste, different in color, just because of the geographic um, uh, location of the tea bushes. So Darjeeling, the same tea, what we call orthodox, that's too aromatic due to the soil. But definitely in the same uh, time, the Assam tea, or Assam also produces orthodox, but that is rich in color, <clears throat> not that way aromatic. So definitely it varies. So I'm sure the same way Chinese tea and the Indian tea also varies a similar way. And uh, talking about different, different flavor, that depends on the blend. So while you are blending, you can put many additional uh, things into it, like um, uh, like um, cardamom, cinnamon. So there are basil. So always these are the factors which uh, create the differentiation of the tea test and the aroma. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Ashok, do you like to add? Well, I think he covered it very nicely. And uh, the... Um, as far as the flavor is concerned, there is uh, um, a category of tea which is artificially flavored. Uh, there may be uh, extracts, plant extracts, which are added uh, to the tea. And uh, like you have, you may have vanilla, you may have, uh, you know, raspberry flavored, strawberry flavored. You have a whole range of, uh, of flavors that are now available in the, in the market. And uh, it depends on uh, what you want to drink. So yes, the tea by itself, of course, does not have a, a, a raspberry flavor or a, or a strawberry flavor. You have, it's an addition to the original tea. Right. Thank you so much. So Francis, I hope the panelist has answered your questions. I, I myself also learned a lot from this. So. There's another question also from the participants on the topic of climate change about deforestation. So how much does CO2, how much does a tea tree plant absorb carbon dioxide as compared to say the forest in general? How the, uh, the tea plantation contributes to the carbon sink to battle this climate change? Um, that's that's a question beyond my scope, really. That's for the scientists to to answer. Uh, I know that we just plant ten thousand plants per hectare, so there's a lot of green that goes into uh, a tea plantation. Yeah. Mm. Or maybe I just uh, reshape the questions. Uh, I just uh, redirect the question a bit. Uh, maybe you can enlighten us, including Prof. Ahmad. Like, how could um, climate change affect tea production in the future and how can tea producers adapt to climate change and mitigate its negative effect on the tea production? So in general, yeah. So uh, I think climate change is, uh, you know, uh, affects a lot of people. We are, we are uh, agriculture-based uh, industry. Uh, cli uh, the climate is very important for our teas to grow. Uh, 
Um, currently, the climate change is such that the rain is, uh, is being clustered together in few months, and we are having many months of drought. So we do have a, a very stressful time when there is no rain. Tea, tea grows only when there is enough sufficient rain and there's humidity and the heat uh, it does not like temperatures beyond 35 degrees. Uh, so obviously there is, uh, there is a lot of stress on the tea with the climate change. Now, how are the planters uh, uh, trying to uh, mitigate these, uh, these problems? Um, like I mentioned in my, in my talk, we try to uh, keep the soil alive. We try to keep it covered. Uh, we try to conserve the waters that we have through mulching and through uh, you know, various processes. So uh, climate change, of course, is a very difficult battle to fight. And I think that also uh, applies to the tea industry. Thank you. You want to add something? Yeah. Uh, no, I, uh, from uh, Mr. Ashok presentation earlier, uh, they have, uh, I mean, very old tree of uh, tree, so they don't cut uh, the, the tree. I mean, the surface of uh, earth is not really exposed directly. Uh, maybe uh, many other factors that you look. And I like the question if we can have a detailed study on the carbon, on the carbon dioxide and carbon stock and so on, uh, including the temperature change, uh, especially the microclimates, uh, on that particular area to answer the question in detail. Right? Maybe some people have done in the, in the forest because there's a mixed vegetation, and then maybe in the uh, oil palm uh, estates, but uh, I don't see, maybe they have already, but we need to Google, uh, read more, and especially in the Cameron Highlands, uh, we should have some local data to support the question on the trip, tropical uh, issues on climate change and biodiversity, as I mentioned earlier. This is what I mentioned uh, uh, in my last slide, uh, uh, climate change, biodiversity, and uh, local participation. Right? So maybe uh, uh, the, the planters can support this idea, do a small monitoring on this uh, question related. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Prof. Um, due to time constraint, we can only have one, accommodate one more question. Perhaps this is the last question. Uh, I would like to open the floor again, particularly to the physical attendees. Yeah, we have one. Uh, hi, Prof. Um, I'm very interested on the part of your speech where you talked about um, plastic use after COVID-19 because I'm from a healthcare background. So I've also seen how the usage of single-use plastic particularly is on the rise after COVID-19. So um, I'm just asking because I suppose previously it was because of cleanliness, but now it's also for safety that people prefer to use, for example, utensils that were plastic wrapped um, and then throw them away. So how do we balance um, being safe in terms of um, health and also um, being safe in terms of our plastic use for the environment? Okay, thank you. That's what uh, I mentioned earlier. Education and awareness is very important. And we use if necessary. And after we use, we have to manage it, right? So uh, as I mentioned, if water from tap going down to the drain. So if you want to avoid from going to the drain, you, you stop somewhere right? and you recycle the water. If you can, you can stop. Uh, the tap. Also, though, this is the thing, if you don't use the plastic, so of course the plastic don't go to the environment. And if you manage it well, they don't go to the environment. How to manage it? We have to do many things like recycle, reduce, reuse. Right, and then in the clinical, uh, I asked them how they manage plastic during the COVID, and they said they have the system because they have you have already have the SOP for the uh, clinical waste, right? But how is still 
give some effect to the environment. And this is where the challenge and technology, how to, based on your fundamental knowledge and the process, uh, can advise how to stop to reduce the pollution. But if we keep talking about GAG to many years, I start learn this in 1970s, uh, where we talk about carbon monoxide, you know, go to the, the uh, create air pollution, create temperature in the urban area and so on, uh, increase the temperature in the urban area. And some propose uh, when you put the trees in the roadside, it can reduce the temperature. But how far you understand and practice this? You know, uh, before we have forest, we have uh, roadside trees, but now because you, you to, to, to make more traffic go through, pass quickly, less accident, for example, we reduce the plants in the city. So this is where the technology integrated. Eh? Say, for example, we increase to use the pub, public transport, for example, to solve it. The same thing with the plastic. We must have the system, how to solve it. Clinical waste, okay, you have the system, the procedures, but how to reduce pollution, side effects or side polluters from the, the process. And for those uh, pollutants, not uh, uh, clinical waste, how you want to manage it? So we mentioned about uh, single-use plastic. Do we need to use it? We have to redesign. And every ladies, for example, must have... Uh, shopping bag in their handbags, for example, because uh, we study the habit of some people without plan go to the shop and want to buy. They plan want to buy one, they bought two. So this increase the size of the bag, I mean, increase, or you cannot, your bag cannot support that what you want to buy. So you must plan and think and manage it. So this is, uh, it's about the attitude, about the mindset, about the thinking and practice. And it takes a long time to, to change people. Because if you have the habit, for example, since three generations earlier, we talk about don't throw rubbish. Until now, we're still throwing rubbish. Say, for example, on a highway, why you have to pay for the rubbish collector? So, because we throw rubbish, right? And... Uh, during heavy rain, the, the, the road become like a river. So they bring all the plastic, everything, go to the, the drain. And finally, where it goes, you don't trap them, you go to the sea. And eaten by fish or birds or whatever. And they break down, stay there for a long term. Right? So this is the thing, you can do it. I, I work with the fishermen. Huh? We found fish in the plastic bottle. And right? they trap there. When they go there inside, because there's no um, uh, tops, they, they trade out. And then the fish can go when they are small. They don't die because they have enough food and water there. Right? So they are living there for life until they die in the plastic water because plastic water won't degrade in five, 10 years. So this is an example. If you found this, maybe you feel guilty why you throw plastic bottle to or roadside, and then finally go. You go to, you stop at the traffic light, eh? any traffic light you like. You just stop by and you look at the plastic from the uh, parts, uh, the secret parts to the all kind of plastic. That's where you, you want to eat, uh, you want to take the sweet, you want to makan jeruk, whatever. Then the plastic, you throw it away. The straw, you look at the plastic uh, at the traffic light. It's the best place to see where people go through. So habit is very important. So if you want to help this kind of thing solve the issue, help me to educate public. Everybody knows, but they don't practice, right? So we, everybody, as I mentioned, everybody should be together. You want a high quality a tea, they must wrap it nicely mm -hmm. so that they, they, they maintain the taste, you know, the texture is on right to your cup. But after you got it, what should you do? Right, this is maybe in the box they should write, please keep this plastic or whatever in your pocket and bring it home. Should you bring it home and pay some people to collect your unwanted rubbish to the landfill site? So all those things you must understand and practice it. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Interesting point, uh, Prof. So um, we have come to the end, but before we actually end this, I would just want uh, every one of you to 
uh, what is your wish? What is your last wish during this international uh, tea day? Maybe we start with Mrs. Anandita. What do you wish for, for the future of um, tea plantation industry? <clears throat> so definitely my wish um, is our, uh, the one on what we are actually working on, the theory of change of trustee that is having an environmentally sustainable tea uh, which fosters you know, economic equilibrium amongst the industry, throughout the industry. <clears throat> and definitely um, one of the questions that was asked related to the um, climate change and carbon uh, neutrality. So uh, maybe as uh, the time is not that much, so uh, otherwise I would have said something on that. So definitely we as a trustee, we are working on this GHG emission, uh, reducing the carbon footprint. So uh, tea industry is very, very uh, important place where we can actually do a lot on this particular thing, where we can actually work on the carbon sequestration process. So that is something where we are actually now working on trying to understand the direct and indirect um, uh, like uh, involvements of this GHG gas emission, how we are calculating that. And once we calculate that um, through various means, there are three steps actually to um, calculate this one. Uh, so one of the most easiest thing is making everything in CO2 and then put it on the kg so how how many kgs of that you are using and then uh, doing the regenerative agriculture so in tea industry <clears throat> focusing regenerative agriculture is the most up thing which i am looking into it because with that we can actually do many things like uh, mulching making biochar and many other things which will help us to do this carbon sequestration and reducing the carbon footprint and definitely that is something i am looking forward from the tea industries not only from india but definitely all part, part of the world wherever wherever we are having this Thank, Thank you so much. You rightfully say so that our regenerative um, farming is is an in thing now. So yes. thank you. Mr. Ashok, maybe one line, one sentence of your last wish for this International Tea Day. Well, I wish everybody a very happy International Tea Day and uh, <laughs> enjoy your cup of tea. Enjoy the cup of tea. Thank you. Uh, Prof. Ahmad, I know your wish is all about no plastic. Maybe you can, uh, your last last sentence on the tea day. Uh, no, no, the, the tea, as I mentioned, tea actually brings people together. The whole yes. world. The whole yes. world. So tea can help us to discuss on the issue and together we solve it. So this is very important. Yeah. So uh, with that, many thanks to our esteemed guest speakers for your brilliant and insightful answers and thoughts throughout the session. I'm sure we have learned a lot about sustainability in the tea industry today. I understand that we will now have a tea break session after this. Looking forward for that. Uh, over to you, MC. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Panshawi. I found it very insightful and very interesting. So I hope all of you enjoy it too. Huge thanks to uh, Tansri Dr. Mazlan, Dr. Panshawi, Mr. Ashok Chatterjee, Mr. Rajesh Guyan, Ms. Anandita Re Mukirji, and Professor Dr. Ahmad Ismail. Special thanks to our sponsors today, Boh Tea Plantations and Coca-Cola Bottles Malaysia. To the participants, thank you very much for gracing your presence here today physically and those who have attended virtually from all over the world, making this hybrid event a success. I would like to remind the audience that this webinar is a pre-conference event of the International Conference on Tropical Science, Trop Science 2024. We have more pre-conference webinar coming soon so please join us next time. Before you leave, we would like to ask all the attendees to be sure to have your goodies. And as it is a tea break, please help yourself and enjoy the food and tea served here. That's all from us today. Thank you and goodbye. <laughs>